Hey everyone, thanks for having me back today. So it's a different topic, also a new launch this time, Midtown Modern, coming up really soon. It's a hot new launch that many people are looking forward to this month. Um, well, this is what I'll be going through today. First, the neighborhood. What's so good about Midtown Modern being in the Bugis neighborhood? I'll talk about the project, the pricing, and as well for a more balanced view, I'll be identifying some of the risk factors. And finally, for those of you who bothered to come today, some bonus content at the end. When you think about buying properties in Singapore, where do people most usually think about? Some of the hot areas traditionally are the Raffles, downtown area over here, okay? CCR, Raffles, and Tanjong Paga areas. Or when you think about playing, when you think about enjoying yourselves, people will think about Orchard Road. So districts one, two, and nine. These are the traditional areas. Now, Midtown Modern is in a new and upcoming area, which most of us are already probably very familiar with, Bugis. So what advantages does Bugis have? Bugis is a mature area that is served by two MRT lines, the blue line, downtown line, as well as the green line, the east-west line. It's a very dynamic area with plenty of different experiences that can be enjoyed by people who are living there. So let's look more into how these two MRT lines benefit people that are there. So the green line is arguably the most important line in Singapore. It's the second oldest, oldest being the red line. Why so? Because if you notice the green line where this project, Guaco Midtown, is located, two stops to the central business district, three stops to Tanjong Paga, the, the two districts that I mentioned earlier, and to the second CBD, Jurong East, 12 stops, an up and coming area, one north business park in Bona Vista is nine stops away, and towards the east, four stops to Paya Lebar Regional Center, and nine stops to Expo. So this line pretty much serves all the important nodes where, where people gather for work. The biggest industries, CBD, One North, Paya Lebar Regional Center as well. On the other hand, ever since the downtown line is complete, it provides a lot of connectivity to something very important to most people as well. Schools. So if you see downtown line, actually along Bukit Timah Road, it has a lot of schools, National Junior College, ACS, Sixth Avenue, um, Nanyang Girls, Beauty World, you have Ni An at King Albert Park, and not forgetting Green Line has its own fair share of schools along the line as well. Making Bugis now a very convenient location for, for adults to go to work and for school-going children to get to their schools. Over the last six years, there's actually been many changes in Bugis. Um, you may not have noticed, so today I want to give you an update on what has been going on. Here, as of now, you can see Bugis has approximately 38,000 employees. And recently, in the last six years, as I mentioned, there has been multiple revamps and rejuvenation of the buildings in this area. You see Suntec City in 2015. Some of the newest properties there are South Beach Residences 2015 and Duo Residences in 2016. Recently, if you recall, the Raffles Hotel also did a revamp in 2019, completed. There's also some new land sales in the area with a new hotel coming up as well. What else is coming? You see, Shaw Tower is undergoing a revamp. Guoco Midtown, our project in question, is also coming up soon. Estimated complete in 2022. Uh, Esplanade is also poised to expand. And Singapore Art Museum is also going through a revamp. So these are things that are causing a lot of revitalization in the Bugis scene. Nearby, at uh, Kampong Bugis, so uh, Victoria Street, Bugis is around this area over here. You see the land parcel where there's going to be a huge new community, which is, um, is on the government land sales now. And when it comes, we expect it to drive more vibrancy and activity in this area. Not forgetting, in terms of connectivity, a new expressway, the North-South Corridor, something that will come up soon as well with its exit very close to our property in question today. The Green Corridor as well, for those who like to cycle, is something that connects our three national parks, Drong Lake District, the um, Drong Lake Gardens, Botanic Gardens, as well as Gardens by the Bay. So with all these changes, traditional mindset has begun to shift. When it comes to work, people think about Tanjong Paga, people think about Raffles Place. When it comes to play, Orchard Road is the go-to district. 
today, with all these new revamps in Bugis, Bugis has become the new go-to destination. Not forgetting, it's also the place where you can get one of the most diversity in terms of activities in Singapore. So these, this, this is just a snapshot. For example, if anyone has been to Bugis, will know that there are a smattering of Chinese restaurants at uh, Tan Kui Lan, Liang Xia, and on the other side, you also have Haji Lane, where you have a lot of nice laid-back bars where you can enjoy with your friends for a long night out because with COVID, it ends at 10.30. At the same time, you also have Hawker Fair nearby, Albert Street Food Center or Beach Road Food Center, Golden Mile isn't that far away. It's a place that is truly diversified where you also have your high-end restaurants in Bugis Junction or Raffles um, Hotel or any of the other well-known hotels nearby. It's an experience that is not able to get as much in the other, mention, the other areas I mentioned, uh, Raffles or Orchard Road. Maybe Tanjong Paga is the closest comparison. What has this resulted in? Okay, let me show you the figures. This is a transaction trend when I compare the various districts, District 7, where Midtown is located, to the other districts, Districts 1, 2, and 9, Orchard Road. Look at the charts. Brown is the um, Bugis area, District 7. You can see, District 7 actually started way back in uh, five years ago, 2016. It was the lowest PSF area on average. It has now since increased by 132%. In comparison, Orchard Road, District 9, this blue line actually decreased by 3.93%. You see, Bugis has really changed quite a bit over the last five years. What about rentals? Rental comparison, we can see that there's really changing um, needs and wants of the tenants today. Many tenants I know who come to Singapore, when, un when they are unfamiliar about this place, they tend to stay somewhere close to where their workplace is. For many, that happens to be Raffles Place, Tanjong Paga area. When they get more familiar with our country, they tend to move outside. Why? Because one of the biggest complaints about CBD is that after office hours, when it gets dark, there's pretty much very little activity there. In contrast, Bugis, at night, it's a bustling of activity. So perhaps because of this, as well as um, last year, COVID-19, it has exacerbated the shift in working lifestyles of the executives here. So look at Bugis District 7 in the brown line here. Similarly, as with the sales average prices, we wore the lowest in terms of per square feet five years ago. Today, look at where Bugis is now. Okay, it has increased from $3.86 per square feet on average to $4.19 on average. If you look at the, the trends, the trends, Bugis is the only district out of these four districts that increased. The rest declined. I think um, the, the, these numbers are clearly, clearly explained that there is a shift in terms of uh, tenant preference, in terms of area. Maybe it's because of this shift towards Bugis from the other districts that are causing them to decline, whereas Bugis rental rates have in fact gone up. Why so actually? Bugis being an up and coming area, all these changes, you may think that there's a lot of condominiums available in Bugis for tenants to rent. Let me show you that that is a misconception for many. Bugis condo supply. When I put a pin in the middle of Bugis Junction, okay, 700 meters, Yes, you see many red color points pop up. But let me share with you, many of these condos are extremely old and the most recent ones are actually over here. You can see clearly that the period from 2005 all the way to almost 2013, there were no new condominiums at all. The newest one is Congo Skyline and then you had South Beach and most recently Duo Residences and even Duo was already about it's already about four years ago since it completed. Including the new condominiums, the M, that launched last year, as well as Midtown Bay, we actually only have 1,951 units for this Bugis Enclave, which is so popular with people. Think about it, these days, some condo projects are even more than 1,951 units today. Now that you have a good idea of the overview of Bugis and the condo supply, let's jump into the uh, project itself. Guoco Midtown. 
Midtown Modern is the one that's launching right now, coming really soon. Over here, it's a 0 0.8 billion plot. However, it's also part of another project called uh, Midtown Bay, both by the same developer, Guokulen, and together they form Guoko Midtown. Why is this important? Well, just like how when we buy certain items, we tend to lean towards more reputable brands. Like if you're going for cars, maybe you're going for a Mercedes-Benz or BMW or Toyota for reliability. Same thing with project developments. Guoko Land is one of the most recognizable and reputable developers in Singapore. It's almost like um, when, when you buy Guoko Land product, you're almost assured of its quality because they are a developer who takes a lot of pride in their work. These are just some of their uh, accolades and their track record. Some of their most famous projects that they came up recently is Wallick Residences, the tallest building in Singapore, located at Tanjung Paga. Martin Morden, um, a project in River Valley, going to TOP this year. And Goodwood Residences and Leiden Residences. This is a developer that, that builds many luxurious projects that has a strong focus on quality. Furthermore, they are also a developer with a strong track record of price protection and increasing prices during the construction phase. This can be clearly seen from some of the uh, prices of the previous projects. Look, Leader Residences increased 2000 to 2003, Guru Residences 2003 to 2005, and Martin Morden also from 2003 to 2006. This is something that uh, we have constantly seen time and time again from Gokuland projects. This is important because as a buyer, you want to know that when you enter, the developer isn't going to be one that's going to cut prices and sell a similar unit to a future buyer at a lower price than what you are paying for today. In terms of the concept of Midtown Modern, Guacoland often takes concepts from each of its properties, the, the successful concepts, and put together to make a truly unique product. So here, there are actually two sites that were bid at different times. The first, look at this, 42 uh, plot ratio land is Guoco Midtown, Midtown Bay, it's a commercial site. And Midtown Modern, the one at Tanquilan, is this pink, uh, pinkish color, which means that there will be retail on the ground floor. It's a residential site above. Look at the model here. Of course, it's better to uh, come down to the show flat to take a look at how it looks like. To give you a brief, this is Guoco Midtown Bay, this is the office tower. And this is the residential tower. If you add on the Midtown Modern Tower as well, the entire block is going to be three towers. And it's actually good because the entire thing is going to be managed by Guaco Land. They intend to keep it very open. I mean, all the red spaces are public spaces. People can walk around. Let's say you're at Tanquilan having your food or Langsia Street. You can come around, hang out at the marketplace, go to the street, go to the plaza, look up at the skies. They want to call it the city's living room. If you've been to places like um, Paya Leba, where, where there's a central area with shops and restaurants lined up all around, this is the vision that is probably going to happen here at the square and marketplaces here at uh, Midtown, at the Midtown. And also if you've been to Warwick residence, the, the ground floor, there's also many open spaces where people can hang around and mingle. This is the kind of concept that um, Guacolan is trying to achieve here. Only that this time is very different because instead of uh, just one building at Wallick even, here they have three different segments. That's the extent and the scale of what Guacoland is trying to do here with Guaco Midtown. Not content with just that, the developer also wants to make it a green sanctuary. This is something really, really very rare and it even came out in the news. That's how um, dedicated Guacoland is to actually making this a reality. Take a look, they are going to feature 30 thematic gardens right in the middle of Singapore's CBD. This is the, um, the site map, site map where the facilities are. The two towers take up about 17% of the uh, total area, leaving the rest for, for nature, for floral, for gardens, so to speak. So that it's, it's almost like you, you have your little garden, your little nature reserve right in your condo. Together, all this make Guoco Midtown. It's very difficult to picture to you because of course it's not there, but just imagine the, the, the scale of the project, the different areas combining to form one contingent 
place where people can hang around, mingle, have their food and live and work and play. Not to mention the biggest selling point I think that is the location of Midtown Modern is this. Okay. What is this? If you notice, this is uh, artist impression, the diagramic chart of Midtown Modern. What the developer has said and are already planning to do, it's been confirmed, is that from your um, facilities deck, which is level three, by the way, there will be a lift that can access you down straight to the basement where the MRT level is. Think about that. It's um, you have your exclusive lift lobby to the MRT station from the project. How amazing is that? And how many condominiums can say they have that? Something to think about. And in addition to everything I've shared, it really makes the location of Midtown Modern stand out amongst everything else. Okay, so much about the project. What about the comparisons? Anyway, it doesn't matter how good the project is if it's too expensive, isn't it? Well, we compare. Um, I'll take the comparisons of the one beta and the two bedroom units as these tends to be the most popular layouts in any projects today. You can see on the left, these are the average pricing for the one beders in the last five years. And on the right, the average pricing of the two beders. Look at the numbers in the next press of a button. I'll show you what are the um, starting prices for Midtown Bay going to be. Midtown Modern, they're going from 1.1x million, whereas for the two beders, they're going for 1.4x million. I would say that for pricing, it's pretty attractive for a pricing of this stature. You don't see it being way too overpriced. It's still within the fair range. On average, it probably still be higher than the M. Same for the um, two bader, but you can see that it's by no means unfairly priced. So in summary, what are the unique selling points of Midtown Modern? Okay, the first is it's a fast growing neighborhood, this Bugis district. Um, last five years, it's been growing and it's still poised to grow even further for the next five years. A place where people can truly live, work and play. Second is the reputation of the developer. Guacoland, as mentioned, is, has this concept, has this idea of delivering a very unique experience, especially with the three different buildings and the different concepts in that area. So it's a vision that they want to bring to life and it's something that I think we all look forward to going to as well once it's completed in future. Third point is of course pricing and location advantage. If you talk about the, the supply in the vicinity, first of all, there isn't that many. And when you drill down to it, Midtown Modern probably has the best location very arguably among the others. The M isn't fully sheltered to the MRT, whereas Duo is still a couple of streets away from the MRT station. And at the same time, the pricing isn't too exorbitant as well. Okay, now on to some of the risks, the weaknesses, and the threats. Um, first of all, it's definitely, um, as with any new launches, one of the things that is a trend is the high per square feet, especially in, re especially in relation to the other resale projects. 2,008 per square feet for one bedroom is likely something that, uh, that, that, that people are not able to comprehend. 2008 per square feet, when um, Duo is probably going at an average of uh, 1,009 to 2,000. The second is a uh, high maintenance fees possibly might be coming because many projects sometimes if they have a commercial component, it adds on to your maintenance fee. So instead of paying just one maintenance fee for the residential, you also pay an additional second maintenance fee for the commercial component. The third point also relates to the area. Bugis, of course, is a great area, but the thing is that it's, it's also a place that never sleeps. So if, if, if you want some rest, if you really want some quiet time, you are not the kind of um, person who, who, what, who likes the hustle and bustle, the area might not be for you. Yep, so this gives you a summary. Um, I'll now go into some of the bonus content. If you want more details on the pricing comparisons, if you want to know what other insider secrets I found out about Midtown Modern in my analysis, and finally, if you want to know if this project is suitable for you, Drop me a call, leave me a message, I'll be happy to speak to you. Once again, thank you, I'm Jim Tay.